little bit. My name is Valdas, I work at Netcentric. A little bit about myself, I already have almost 15 years with uh, Java, developing web-based applications in Java. I started with, as always, uh, Java Fortis, then Stress and Swiss. Uh, two and then went into Sprint and so on. But one day I just decided, okay, enough is enough. I wanted to to do something new, something cool, and yeah, just no sequel, something like that. Then I moved to Barcelona and I started at Netcentric and I got introduced to this Apache Slink framework and uh, Java Content Repository. So that got my attention, and since then I'm there. I also appeared in season 6, Game of Thrones, so I survived one season, <laughs> thanks to that. And let's move a little bit history about uh, this Apache Slim. So it all started as always in long, long time ago in far, far away galaxy in Switzerland. There was a startup, they managed to build a content management system that was becoming super popular because it had some unique features and one day in 2007 they decided okay we will open source this. In 2009 it became a uh, Apache top level project. Probably I don't know how many of you heard about that but it's there. And as always with every successful startup, you know, some giant comes and buys them. So Adobe bought Gate.com, that small startup company, so now it's a Adobe's product and they heavily support this open source uh, project, Apache Sling. So, so far we already nine, nine years in, in Apache with Apache, so we already managed to go up to version 8, so it's quite a mature project. It's been in production for quite so many years, so it's stable. Just, I took a small graph from this year, so how many issues were created and resolved. Basically, we have 40 committers, and most of them, as you can guess, they are from Adobe, or at least email address ends with Adobe, so that everyone is welcome to contribute to that. Okay, so a little bit about the architecture of all that thing. So this, uh, this startup, so they had an idea, oh, let's build this from scratch. Uh, because it's a content management system, so they decided we will go with Java content repository. So they wrote a specification for that, and then the first implementation, and donated as well to Apache. And it's called this project Apache Jackrabbit. This is Java Content Repository. In short, it's a file system and a classical database merged together. And this takes the best of both worlds, let's say. It's a hierarchical, so it's no SQL of the database, it's hierarchical. It's starting with root, slash, and then goes into the nodes. Inside the nodes we have properties, and inside these properties we store content, data. And data can be anything, whatever. So data is a web page, blog post, image, video, PDF, whatever you can imagine. Code as well, HTML, Java, zips, jars, everything goes there. Everything lives in that content. So it's Apache Jackrabbit, it's quite popular. On top of that, there's few open source uh, content management systems. Like one of them is Magnolia, probably you know. There are few document management systems built on Apache Jackrabbit project. There are also commercial implementations. I think Kipo it's called. Content management system. So you can check it out, this project, and easily build any system to do oh, It has some nice features, versioning, access control on every node, you can gradually. Observations if something has changed in your database in some nodes, so 
some uh, event can be fired and you of course take actions and queries because it's not the classical database with tables so it has some specific queries to query the database database uh, there are no IDs as you can guess because IDs are evil according to Java Content Repository so you always identify your data by the path because path should be in so Java Content Repository is Apache Jackrabbit and then they needed a web framework on top of that so that's where Apache Sling comes into place so it's a uh, it's a RESTful architecture for Java Content Repository, basically in a RESTful way through HTTP to manipulate the data to retrieve the data. Easy like that. Worth to mention that everything runs in OFGI container. So, and this container is implementation of Apache Felix and Apache Felix console later on that I will show in the demo is developed by Apache Sling guys just for that uh, later on after lunch there is one talk that uh, Christian came or sorry if I'm wrong but he will talk more about OSGI okay. so it's very easy to deploy new bundles basically it's just a jar you have to drop a jar and it gets installed later on I will show you them and of course everything that is wrapped by Adobe by Adobe's content management system that is called Adobe Experience Manager for marketing reasons probably so they provide enterprise level management system on top of that that's why they have to support all of the process okay. uh, talking about Apache Sling, you have to mention REST because it's a REST-based uh, uh, framework and a REST in academic version. I never can remember its representational stage transfer is the software architecture style of the World Wide Web. Basically, the web, web that we imagine. This is what it meant to be. But non-academic version, everything is a resource. So our web pages should always point to a resource. So URL, you're doing URI the composition, so this is a path, and this path, this resource path, directly as you can guess, resource into the database because it's there. So that's why it's super fast and it's why it's so easy to implement these applications. Of course, it has to support uh, HTTP methods, get put posts, uh, or you know, to do all the create, read, update, read operations. It has to be stateless, and all this has to be more or less known. Every request has to carry all the information that is needed to manipulate the data or to retrieve the data. So, all the way, this is how we used to be or we still write it. So we are so every sentiment. First of all we want a script. First of all we point to the script and we pass somehow our data what we want and then tell the script what to do. The script goes to the database, builds everything, the page, the resource, whatever, and it turns back. This is vice versa. So and this is Sling's way to do it. So first of all you point always to the resource, to the data that you want. And later on you ask for the script to render that data. So how you decide which script, we will talk later, but in the easiest way, for example, just an extension. I want this book in HTML format, JSON, XML. Basically it's the same data, just the rendering script is different. And of course later on there are some benefits. It's, of course you're friendly and so on, and you don't have to spend hours on Apache uh, writing you know, to, make, to beautify your URLs for them. And probably the only message that I would like you know, to take home is that this Apache Sling is all about resource first request. So that means, as I said, first of all you go to the resource, find the data, and then only then decide how to render the data, how to present it. 
Now it's done in a simple few steps. Of course, there's longer steps, but basically you take the euro, you take the path. So this is a path that points to the resource. Then you go to that resource. From there, in the properties, you find the script that will render the resource. You resolve that script. You build a change of these scripts because these scripts can have inheritance, and they usually they do. And then you execute. Simple as that. Return results. So, just to show in a simple way. Uh, yes. So the path, the resource. So we have our database. It's hierarchical. We build in any way we want to build. So that our URLs would be human readable. So even from URL, we can decide to do this all about books, Java version eight. And that's what we have in our database. This is the resource path. Then we have properties. Inside the properties, we have all the data that is needed for that book. Title, description, the actual text, everything that is, can belong to these properties. It can point to somewhere else, like if you need images and so on. But the most important thing is this thing, resource type, actually our script that will render the data. So in this case, for example, sling resource type, it points to the script that will have to render it. And of course, the script lives inside the database, Java Content Repository. So this path as well will have to be resolved. So it goes under the apps, books, product page, this is the product page, and then we have all the scripts, either it would be HTML, JSON, or whatever. So this is the basic idea. Uh, this is very popular for all the starters, the starting work is a bunch of swing. This is a cheat sheet. Just to remember basic steps, that's what, what I already talked about. Basically taking the path, the solving, and then you have as well normal extensions. You can use of course selectors uh, or suffixes. So this is how we can specify the actual script that we want. For example, if it's in an edit mode or view mode, <coughs> we might render our data in a different uh, way. So later on, when we decide which script to use, we can we use this is a get HTML extension that we have a selector and so on. So we just specify which script exactly we want to use. Later on, I will show this servlets in Java. We do the same. Just register the resource. And a script, this is an old version, this is JSP. But for now, this scripting language that is supported in Apache, Apache Sling, I'll come in the next slide and explain more about this. But I don't know what it should be have now. But anyway, about resource resolver. So this is how we read. Resources Holder is responsible for, for finding these resources for us in a, in a, in a database, in a Java function repository. It's not always can be one-to-one -one path to, to a database. It can be a little bit different or, or even your data can be stored somewhere else, for example. So I just think went a little bit further and implemented additional resource providers so resources can come from file system, so they just map to the resource tree. They can come from Mongo, Cassandra, and OSQL databases. So you can write your own resource provider. It can, it can come in from regular classical database. So you write these resource providers and you kind of spread, spread you know, where your information can come from. It's very useful, for example, to provide these files take uh, from the file system, especially for the videos, because they are huge. You can store them somewhere on the cloud, somewhere else. So basically, all you have to map just to map your resources. And now our scripting engine. So this is what is supported. Of course, they have some old JavaScript dialects, GSPs. We used to write a lot of GSPs, but Two years ago, there came a new templating language, Cyclip. So this is 
already donated to our Batches link. It comes one of the bundles and you are free to use this. Also, it supports many more templating languages if you need to fulfill your needs. But Cycle is a default one. It's what's the advantage of it? It's a, basically a valid HTML5 file with data attributes. So all you have right here, for example, data, site test, and this is a property. This property is already checked at every source. That means the properties of the node. So you, you can redirect a title, expression language, property, title, and you display. So that comes as an if, conditional statement. Does it exist? You display. You can get your data from Java as well. All you need to use data slide use, and it gets from the Java Bean. It's a slim model. It's a simple Java Bean with few annotations just to inject and get data from the data data. You can use JavaScript as well. Um, yes, so it's built with security in mind. Uh, Cross site scripting is, is empowered here. And why it's important, why it's really, why we decided to move from GSPs? Because this is a validation of five, and this is where backend and frontend guys can meet. For example, design agency, they can deliver a shiny website, all they deliver is just an HTML, and we have to do to fill the data. So we don't need to change much, and they can understand if we send that this, they can understand what this is, because this is just additional attributes. So between back and front and front end we can communicate much easier. So that's the main advantage. Okay, so the full servers in the system, of course there are many, many, many of them. There's kind of main authentication servers, main servers, error handling servers. But I would like just to point two of them. So without implementing any code, you can manipulate the database already. So the GC that you would use before get server and for updating, moving, popping uh, all the data you would use Sling Post Server. And I will show how to do that. Even without writing any piece of code. This is another cheat sheet how to write, how to do that. So you can do through a simple HTML, HTML core, you just point to your, uh, your source, the node, for example, I, I won't go too deep, too deep to this, but you can point to the node that you want to insert, and you, of course, execute the HTML form, and you get the data inserted. So, instead of writing HTML forms, I will show you a small demo using curl and report and sending posts. So to start to play with it, it's quite simple. You have to go to Slink Apache Org. You will find all the information there. You can download the jar file, the launchpad that has everything. It has OIGI, it has a database, Apache Jackrabbit, and Apache Slink. Uh, I will do that now. nothing else in this directory, so all I have to do is to start uh, this jar. Boom, that's it. So the server is started, the OJ container is started. If I will go to is it lightweight. Okay, this is the main page that you get inside once you start it. I would like now to go to uh, OSGI Apache PBX console. Okay, so what I can see here, this is all the bundles of OSGI. Basically, the bundle is such a jar with a specific manifest to run inside OSGI container. So, this is all 
our applications are here. What I can do, stop, start, restart, redeploy, update the version without stopping the container, and that's the cool part. <coughs> no downtime until you swap the actual job. Okay, so, and now the database. not so easy to show it, but this is a free tool, uh, Explorer, for the database to, to see what's inside. Of course, Adobe has a commercial one uh, for Java Content Repository. It's much more powerful. You can do many more things, but it will do that job right here as well. So all you have is just a tree right here. Also, you have all your notes. You have your applications right here, and that's uh, all you need. So everything is here in the nodes, and then you have properties, and properties have types. For example, Java Content Deposit, Primary Type is a slim folder. So let's create something here. Start a new window. This is just a representation. This is 
application engineering I can do. So it's pretty cool because it first of all goes to the to the resource and then find the script to render the data. Also, of course, I can add I can add properties. Included 
by sling models. Basically, I already mentioned this. So Java means with additional annotations to be from Java content repository. We have sling validation model to validate the data before you insert, when you insert it in uh, Java content repository. Mocks for writing your, for mocking your resource paths, writing JDB tests. Uh, events, you can, we can listen to any events, it can be distributed events triggering on any resource change, on any resource path change. Then we have jobs that guarantee that they are going to be executed at least once, even if the server is down, then probably another instance will take over it. Pipes and lazy events in query API for that. So you can write your own models quite easily because it's uh, OSGI. All you have to write is one bundle and you can commit to the project or on your own. So to take all that the fun is bad actually because application to write these applications is becoming super fast because deployment time and language charts, everything is made just to build these applications. We are not building a robot. We don't need to call, you know, some method with five parameters. Everything is based on rest, so and it should be easy. Um, it's a Apache open source project, so you can check it out today. You saw how it's easy to manipulate the data. And thanks. Okay. Maybe some questions. Somebody. Please. Any more container of the code or did you run It's uh, Jetty. Jetty. Okay, then thanks, and we can have one.